Question four from area and volume is a no calculator question from the 2010 exam. It's question number four. And in this question, I'm given region R, which is bounded by the graph of y equals six, which is the blue line, and the graph of y equals two squared of x, which is the red one. In part A, I'm asked to find the area of region R. I can see I have a consistent upper and lower bound throughout that whole region, all the way from a low x of zero to a high x of nine. So my limits are gonna go from zero to nine and then upper minus lower. I don't have a calculator, so I need to do this integration by hand. The first step is to rewrite that square root as x to a one half power. And then the antiderivative of six is the six x and the power will apply to two x to the one half. Add one to the power, divide by the new power. My limits go to the end. I simplified this a little bit in the next step before I plugged my limits in. When I plug the nine in to 54 minus four thirds nine to the three halves power. When I plug a zero in, that just gives me zero, so I didn't need to write anything. Uh, you can go ahead and evaluate this three halves power if you want to, or you can just leave it at this boxed answer right here that would earn the answer point. So you would get a point for a correct integrand, a point for a correct antiderivative, and then a point for that correct answer, simplified or not. If you choose to simplify this all the way down to that 18, it's fine, but if you make a mistake, then you lose the answer point. In part B, I'm rotating around a horizontal line, y equals seven. Because it's a horizontal line, I know my integration will be with respect to x. I look at where that horizontal line is in relation to my region r, and I can see that there is a gap between the region and the axis, which tells me this is a washer method. Inner and outer is found by just starting at your axis of rotation. Whoever is closer, in this case y equals six, will be your inner function. And whoever is further away, which in this case is the y equals two squared of x, will be your outer function. Putting that all together gives me pi. My limits are from zero to nine, the x interval of the region. This is my outer radius, and I have to subtract my axis of rotation, which is the seven, minus my inner radius is six, and again, minus that seven. So this is my outer radius squared minus my inner radius squared. It would be equally correct if within each of these binomials you switched around the terms. This first one you could say seven minus two squared of x, and then the second one you could say seven minus six. You earn one point for the constant, which is pi, and the limit zero to nine, and then two points for the correct integrand. If you did something like you forgot to square it, you might get one of the two points. Or if you interchange the two binomials, you might get one of the two points. Or if you forgot to subtract the seven from each of those, then you could earn one out of two points. In part C, we've got region R as the base of a solid. This is a little bit different than what we've looked at in the past in that we're looking at cross sections that are perpendicular to the y-axis. If you look at all the previous ones, they said perpendicular to the x-axis. So what that means is we're gonna integrate this with respect to y. Some of the rules with integrating with respect to y, we're gonna have a dy. Our limits are gonna be a y interval instead of an x interval. And our functions need to be in terms of y, that is they need to be solved for x. So as I'm writing my integral, I'm gonna keep those guidelines in mind. I am looking at the area of a rectangle. So the area of a rectangle is base times height. I need to look for information in the problem that allows me to get this down to a single variable. And that information is sitting right here for me. My height is three times the base. So I just substitute 3b for the h. And my area formula becomes 3b squared. And my b, the base of my rectangle, is right minus left. And that is because this is an integration with respect to y. Um, when I do right minus left, I need to get these functions in terms of y. So I start with my y equals two square root of x, and I solve this for x to get it in terms of y. On the left side, I'm just bound by the y-axis, which is x equals zero. So you don't even really need to write that. But that is what I'm gonna substitute in for my b, is that y squared over four minus zero. And my integral, which is with respect to y, goes from a zero to six, that's low y, to high y of the region. Three, this is my base. Uh, and like I said, that minus zero is optional. Squared, and then a dy at the end. It simplifies to this. You don't actually have to do that simplification. Point wise, your correct integrand is worth two points. And just having that integral with the correct limits and a dy at the end is the third point in part C.